Hey everybody, this is Bob KK4DIV and this is my Anytone D878UV Plus radio. Oh wait, I've already done this video. Let's try this again. Hey everybody, this is Bob KK4DIV and this is my new Anytone D878UV2 Plus radio. Hmm? Yes, that's right folks, I purchased this new Anytone D878UV2 Plus radio out of my own pocket. Nobody sent it to me and nobody's sponsoring this video. I bought this radio because, well, let's start at the beginning. You may remember a year or so ago I purchased this original, uh, to me, uh, D878UV Plus radio because of its uh, APRS capabilities, uh, but I was a little disappointed in the implementation of the APRS on here. It's only APRS receive. It didn't, or I'm sorry, it only beaconed. It did not receive, and really that's kind of halfway APRS to me. I mean, you, if you really want the full APRS experience, you need both sending and receiving, beaconing and receiving. So, uh, looks like they, uh, they fixed it with the two. So, that's why I picked this radio up, uh, because of the APRS capabilities. Um, I, I, I still gave this radio a, a thumbs up in my initial video. I still like this radio. Uh, there are a lot of good features in the original radio. They just improved it in the new one. Uh, they both have... Uh, Great battery life, they're both very well built, and uh, I think they're a great DMR radio. So like I said, I got this radio mainly for the APRS capabilities, and that's what I want this video to be about. Not so much all the, the features and specifications about the radio, because honestly, you guys can look that up. Google search it. You can go to Bridgecom Systems website and see this radio. All the specifications are there. Uh, Jason Ham at Ham Radio 2.0 has already done a video on it, um, so which I haven't watched yet. <laughs> I need to I need to sit down and watch it. Um, and yeah, I'd, I had ordered this radio, and then like that same day, his video came out. I said maybe I should have watched the video first. <laughs> but he does great videos. Go over there and check his video out on this radio. That's Ham Radio 2.0. I'll put a link up but here. But I will that. cover a couple of specs on this radio. First, this radio, the new one, the UV2 Plus radio, has 500,000 digital contacts versus the older radio, which only had 200,000 digital contacts. Now, um, the last time I downloaded the, the contact list, the DMR contact list for, for the entire world, the worldwide list, it was about 197,000 contacts. So you're getting to the upper limit of the uh, 878 UV plus uh, capabilities there. It's got 200,000. Uh, DMR is growing, people. It's growing. And uh, with this radio and the 500,000 contacts, you're going to have uh, plenty of room for growth. The other specs I'd like to cover is the power. Uh, both radios have the same power capabilities. On the turbo mode, VHF is 7 watts, UHF is 6 watts, high setting, both have 5 watts, medium setting is 2.5 watts, and the low setting is 1 watt. Uh, they both have GPS's built into them, and these are both the plus models, and they both have Bluetooth. That's all I'm going to talk about in the specs. Like I said, if you're interested more about the specifications and all that stuff, that's not the kind of channel I run. I don't get into the nitty-gritty details and and all that stuff and spurious emissions and blah 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 I'm more of a hands-on guy how does it work and that's what this video is about so the next part of the video I'll be honest with you is a little bit boring you can skip through it if you want to but I wanted to show everyone how to get the new 878 UV 2 plus radio set up so you can receive APRS signals and to do that we're going to cut to a screen capture video of the CPS software and how I set this radio up to do that.
Okay, the first thing you want to do is you want to create a channel for your Apers uh, frequency here, which is 144.390. You see how I have it in channel 90. So if I double click that, you can see I just called it APRS. Receive frequency is 144.39, and the transmit frequency is 144.39. I uh, just made it an analog channel and didn't set any kind of CT, CSS, or DCS. None of that's needed. But you do want to check this little box over here. APRS RX. That's the APERS receive. That you want to make sure that is checked. And that's how you set up the receive channel. Now for the um, beaconing, a uh, couple things you want to do, and I should have mentioned this first is you want to go up here to tools and go to options and make sure first your GPS is checked and make sure your APERS and analog APERS receive are both checked on this uh, NX function setting. So I already have those checked on mine. Uh, good idea to just go ahead and do that first uh, before you set up your your channel. And then uh, once you've got your uh, APERS functionality checked and you've got your channel made you'll want to go down here to apers and you can see here we have this is where your um, transmit is put in so you can see down here under the analog portion uh, transmit frequency we have 144.390 uh, i have an apers transmit tone turned off uh, the two call is APA T81. Uh, don't need a two call SSID. Uh, put in your call and your SSID in here. I left the symbol rate and the uh, or the symbol table and the map icon the same. Digipeter path. You want to put wide one dash one and wide two dash one. Do not put a space in here or else it will not work properly. Uh, it's wide one dash one, wide two dash one without a space and then uh, enter your sending text uh, I just put in my website address there you can put in whatever you want you can put in your name um, what you're doing today whatever you want you can put in that sending text I just put my uh, my website in so if people want to go check out um, my website and see what's going on um, a little bit about me you can uh, get that taken care of there uh, let's see, transmit delay I have set to 600 milliseconds, uh, send subtone is off, um, so CTCSS and DCS isn't used, uh, pre-wave time in milliseconds, 600, transmit power is high, and then over here, I have all these checked, uh, po uh, position, mic E, object, item, message, all these are checked over here, so it'll be listening out. Uh, for these types of reports coming over APERS. Okay, and that's how you get that set up. So as you can see, it's not really that difficult to get this radio set up to receive APRS and Beacon APRS. Um, it is a little bit more difficult for those of us who are used to uh, some other brands of radios such as uh, Kenwood, or a Yezu radio, but honestly, all of them have a learning curve. This is just no different. It's It's got a learning curve, and it's not really more difficult than any of the others. It's just, uh, it's just different, and if you're used to programming APRS and those other types of radios, you just got to learn how to do it on this one, but the software really does make it easy to do. All right, now that you've seen how easy it is to use the CPS software to set this radio up to receive APRS, let's talk a little bit about how well it does receive those signals. And for that, I made another video clip here and we'll go to it right now. All right, so we have the Anytone D878UV2 Plus radio set up to the APRS frequency. Uh, it is on receive and I am standing across the room with my FT1D Yezu radio. Uh, we've got it set to low power here 
and we're going to send a beacon and see how well the antitone picks up that signal. There it goes. So you can see right there on the screen that it received the beacon. Uh, let's try it again. Okay. Yeah, so you can see that works pretty well. It seems to be receiving the signal and downloading those uh, packet, uh, APRS packets without an issue. I want to show you how you get in here and see your packets. So you want to hit the menu key over here. And then you want to go, uh, APRS is the last one in the menu. So if you go up, it'll take you actually to the bottom of the list as it rolls back around. That's APRS right there. Press menu again. And we're going to go down to uh, analog APRS info. Hit the menu. And then go down to the info again. And you can see all the beacons it's received. And you see I've been playing around with it quite a bit. But uh, yeah, so. That's the last beacon right there it received from me. And so you can see uh, my information there. And some more information. Shows the path. And shows the, uh, the message. And then it's, it rolls back around to the first page. So there's one, two, three, four pages of APRS information. Uh, in that one received APRS packet. So I made that video and I showed you how well it receives APRS signals. That radio, you know, you saw it. I uh, had a Yezu radio beaconing. This radio was close by and it was able to pick up the APRS signals. Um, I, from my experience though, I run an, an iGate and a Digipeter here at the house. It's hit and miss, honestly, on receiving the APRS beacons on this radio. I'm not sure what it is. Um, when I've got my handheld, um, I can set it down across the room or in another room, and this radio will pick it up all day long. But for my, my Digipeter and my iGate station, I'm not sure what it is. It, it has a hard time decoding those signals. My other radio decodes them fine. But this one has a little bit of a difficulty, so I'm going to have to dig into that a little bit more. There are a couple things I'd like to note about the APRS on this radio. Uh, this does not, like your Kenwoods and your Yesus, uh, they have a true dual VHO, VFO. Uh, this does not. Uh, that means if you're receiving a signal on, say, like the A-band, and you receive an APRS signal on the B band, it's not going to decode that signal because it's already locked into a signal on the A band that it's already receiving. So that's a bit of a downfall for this radio. It's not that big of a deal because honestly, you know, you can catch it on the next transmission. Not that big of a deal, but it is something to consider. The other thing I'd like to mention is there is no APRS messaging on this radio. Sure, you can transmit a beacon and you can receive beacons and things like that, but there is no messaging. There is no APRS messaging. So I can't create a message and send it over the APRS system. It, it doesn't have that capability. It's simply sending beacons and receiving beacons and in those beacons are are um, uh, brief messages you know you have a a beacon message in there and uh, location details speed things like that but no messaging some of you may say that well you know it's dmr aprs messaging isn't really needed and i kind of get it because dmr radios do have messaging capabilities built into them uh, but I would say to that, what if you wanted to send a message radio to radio uh, to a radio that's not a DMR radio, but they did have APRS capabilities. In that kind of situation, I think you're, you're missing out a little bit on this radio, not having those APRS messaging capabilities. But, you know, it's, it's another minor detail. Um, 
Just something to think about. So in summary, would I purchase this radio? Well, I already did, but should you purchase this radio? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. This radio from Bridgecom Systems is $299. Um, it's, it's a good radio, it really is. Like I said, it, it depends on what you're, what you're wanting to do. If you're wanting to do APRS, if you just are buying a radio for APRS, I would not recommend this radio. Um, there's other better options out there for APRS uh, use. Uh, the FT3D, uh, my old FT1, uh, I think implements APRS much better. Uh, the Kenwood radios, the THD-72, the THD-74, which are discontinued for some reason. Um, but those were great APRS radios. Uh, there's a lot of good options out there for APRS. Um, this has APRS capabilities. It is not the best at it. Sorry. I just tell it like it is. However, what was that? However, it's a fantastic DMR radio. Probably, in my opinion, one of the better DMR radios out there. I might even go as far to say as it's the Cadillac of DMR radios. Um, fantastic battery life. 3100 milliamp hour battery on here. This will last you a day, day and a half. Whereas my little Yaesu radio, 1800 milliamp hour battery, after six hours or so, I'm having to change batteries. I have to keep a couple batteries on hand charged if I want to carry the radio with me during the day, all day. Whereas this, I charge this bad boy up at night, it's good all day into the next day if I need it to. So uh, when it comes to battery life, this radio is a winner. And for that reason, I think it's a great everyday carry radio because it has such a good battery life and you don't have to worry about carrying extra batteries. Um, the DMR, it, it, it's a very good DMR radio. So if, you're, if your number one priority is DMR, I think this is the radio for you. And the fact that it does have APRS capabilities, not you know, not holding against it all the little the, the quirks it has with its implementation of APRS, uh, it's it's a great option for you. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, it doesn't have true dual VFO, it doesn't have APRS messaging, and it is a little hit and miss on receiving some of the beacons out there, and I haven't really got to the bottom of that yet um, but um, great DMR so radio. Would I recommend it if you're looking for a very well built radio DMR radio you can carry with you every day and not have to worry about changing batteries and worry about the build quality or anything like that yes get this radio it's a fantastic radio. I'm going to put it in the arsenal I'm going to use it and I'm probably going to you know sell this one off to a local ham that wants to get into DMR that needs a good deal on a used DMR radio. So pass that along, get one more person into DMR, and then I'll have this one that I can carry with me daily and have APRS on it. So that's it, everybody. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Appreciate everybody spending time with me and watching this video. If you do like what you see, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share this video. That certainly helps the channel out quite a bit. So until next time, everybody, we'll say 73. This is Bob, KK4DIV. Bye-bye.